Hello and a very warm welcome to a reassuringly British first look at a new American firing system called Ignite with 18 cues and being controlled by an app on your phone or tablet. Um, this is causing quite a lot of excitement. Initial pricing in the UK, 180, 190 pounds, something like that. Igniters are sold separately. Now, a slight confession, I say first look video, I have had this unit for a couple of weeks and I started the video a few weeks ago when this arrived. Uh, I thought it'd be a 10 minute job, just a quick overview and unboxing, slap some music over the top, back of the net. But when I started to use the system, I had some questions about some of the functionality of the app or lack of it in some cases. So um, I looked at it a little deeper than I originally was going to and I've exchanged quite a few emails with Scott at Ignite more on that uh, as we go along. And Scott, if you are watching this, thank you so much for your patience. I know that I've bombarded you a bit over the past couple of weeks. A big thank you to Mark at Firework Crazy. Uh, I will put his web address uh, on the screen. When news of this system first broke uh, in my forum, Mark said that he was going to be the UK distributor for this unit. So I reached out to him, see if I could get hold of one fairly quickly. Uh, Mark got one to me in super quick time within a couple of days of it hitting the UK. So thank you for that. So if you are a member of the public and you want to buy one of these, you can do so from Mark's website. If you are a firework retailer and want to stock this, again, Mark is the person uh, to speak to. And on the subject of buying one of these, um, just to explain my relationship with this product uh, by way of a disclosure, I am not a retailer of this system, so I'm not selling it. Neither are there any affiliate codes or that kind of shenanigans going on with the YouTube video. So what I'm trying to say here is that if you buy one of these, uh, uh, there's no financial reward for me. I'm looking at this unit and reviewing it purely as an end user. Um, I'm not being paid to make this video and uh, Scott at Ignite and Mark at Firework Crazy, they will see this video when it goes onto YouTube at the same time as everybody else. Okay, let's get started. Okay, so let's take a look at the packaging and what you get when you buy one of these. Um, on the subject of the packaging, the box is somewhat of a luxury uh, at the consumer firework end of the market. I know my DB04R box, the tatty little thing that is, is cowering under this table in shame. Um, this even has reflective foil on the front. Happy days. Uh, what more could you want? In fact, let me run a video now um, to show you around the box. Uh, feel free to pause this video if you want to read any of the blurb on the side. Okay, so jumping into the contents of the box, you get a firing system. Um, you get an antennae, antenna, um, is that the right word, an aerial? Um, this screws onto um, the top left of the unit and will bend at right angles as well if you need to put it into a case. Um, you get a rechargeable battery, uh, which is partly charged already. Also useful, there is a nine volt PP3 connector, so you can always have a backup power source, keep a spare battery or two uh, in your firing system case. That's really good thinking. 
Though I should point out, however, that if you do use a PP3 instead of the supplied rechargeable battery, uh, you can't get the battery compartment properly closed. Um, I, there might be a knack to it, which I don't have. There is a USB connector to charge the battery. Uh, you also get an Ignite sticker. Um, if you're thinking to yourself, what in God's name uh, is the point of that? Um, you're not the only one. However, uh, Apple includes stickers with their products and uh, obviously they're doing quite well, so why not? So there's a need help card. I need help. <clears throat> uh, a US-based phone support, uh, live chat online as well, email support, and incredibly, uh, emergency 24 seven support. So if you're on site and you have a problem with this unit and you desperately need help, um, you can actually ring a, a number, albeit it's a, a US number. So I, I, I don't know the practicalities of doing it from the UK, but it is there if you need it. Did I mention a lifetime warranty? Uh, the Ignite website uh, puts it like this. If it goes wrong and it wasn't you that broke it, they will uh, fix it for you. Okay, so let's take a closer look around the unit itself. Measurements first. The unit is about 8.8 centimeters wide, 13 centimeters long, including the switch, 3.8 centimeters high, doing, to include the antennae, if you're wanting to put it in a case, uh, then it's about seven and a half centimeters with the antennae uh, bent at right angles. The battery compartment is located on the bottom. Um, now it is just a piece of plastic. Uh, there's no weatherproofing that I can see and it, it does rattle. So I think that uh, protecting this from the, from the damp British weather is gonna be uh, essential. Uh, the on off button is located uh, on the top. It's push on, push off. That is also quite rattly. So that's possibly uh, another uh, place where damp could get in if you're not protecting it. Uh, and on the top, there is a light here which shows that it's on. Um, you can change the color of this essentially each module in the system can be assigned a color so you can tell them apart. Uh, again, more on this um, a little later. Okay, so onto the igniter connectors on this system. So rather than use traditional spring-loaded connectors, if I bring in a DBO4R here, usually you'd have these spring-loaded lugs, you'd prise them open like so, put the copper wire ends of your igniter leads into the holes and then let go. Ignite instead uses small sockets and each igniter has a plug on the end. They describe these as being industry standard quick plug connectors. The principal advantage first of all of these is a reduction in size. So um, a whole line of six sockets on this, that's six cues, is only four centimeters wide. And in actual fact, the entire three by six interface on this is just four by four and a half centimeters. So let me just show you a quick bit of video to give you an idea of scale. This is the UKFR official fire marshal Lego man. I do like my Lego um, to give you an idea of just how bijou these connectors are. Another advantage of this type of igniter, and if I show you an official igniter here, I don't know how well you can see it from that distance, but again, uh, this is the small plug on the end that there, it's tiny, isn't it? So um, because it's a molded plug, you don't have to worry anymore about shorting out um, wires when you're connecting up to uh, your systems. And here in front of me, in fact, is a official box of igniters. So this is a box of 20. Now, price-wise, um, a box of uh, 20 Ignite igniters currently uh, in the UK is looking at about 15 pounds. So that's about 75p each. Importantly, I know this is a question many people in the forum have asked. Yes, once you've used one of these clips, you can cut the end off, dispose of the used igniter, and then simply wire in um, an igniter of your choice, which doesn't have to be another one of these because you're reusing the plug on the one that you've got. 
One other thing uh, just to quickly cover with these uh, clip-on igniters, if you want to fire multiple igniters per queue, an obvious problem here is that once you've plugged one in, you've used that queue up. But there's a couple of simple solutions to this, um, by far the easiest and the cheapest. Simply um, cut your igniter lead at some point and then manually strip and twist or jelly crimp or use a, a electrical connector board, something like that, to wire multiple uh, clips per um, plug. Also, Ignite sell what's called a breakout board. It's $5. I don't know about UK avail availability or pricing yet. So that will plug into one of your queues and then it ends in a board uh, with five sockets on, available in series or parallel. Just a reminder though, with clip-on igniters, you need to wire them in parallel. On Ignite's website, they do say that the maximum number of clip-on igniters per queue is two. So whether we can stretch that or not in the real world will be something that I will hopefully cover in a future video. Okay, so on to protecting the unit from uh, rain or moisture, uh, which is gonna be pretty important in November and December um, in the UK. Protecting this can be as simple as putting it in a plastic bag. So you don't need to spend a fortune on cases if you don't want to, but please do something. I wouldn't just put this down on damp grass um, because of the battery compartment uh, being on the bottom. However, the recommended way of protecting a firing system is to use a hard plastic case. Here we go, this is the, uh, the, the Tesco clip-on box that I'm using uh, for this as a temporary measure until I get a, a nicer case. So something that's big enough to put this in uh, with the aerial uh, at right angles, uh, something like that. So <clears throat> this isn't a very, uh, a very nice looking solution, but this is completely waterproof uh, and uh, will resist against some impacts as well. Um, if you want to go a little bit more upmarket, then you'll be looking at cases made by Pelly or equivalent to that. Now, I'm just going to put a photo uh, up on the screen now. So this is a Pelly case. So this is at the higher end of cases in terms of costs, but also in terms of durability. Um, this is a great Pelly case that Market Firework Crazy has sourced. Um, thanks for letting me use this picture, Mark. Uh, this has got a yellow base section, so good visibility on your firing site, but a clear lid so you can see through and see the status of your system. Um, Price-wise, you're looking at about 40 to 45 pounds, depending on whether you buy a case from Mark with a, an Ignite system as well. Um, but that also includes an aerial extender. And you can see on the photo that rather than plug the aerial directly into the corner of the unit, you instead put it on an extender and that will allow you just to um, have a little bit um, more leeway in terms of case sizes. So you can go for a slightly more compact case than I'm using um, with my Tesco uh, lunchbox. <laughs> Okay, so moving on now to the app, which you would use to control this system. Uh, and it's, uh, it's a wonderful step forward, isn't it? I mean, this is the uh, 12 button old fashioned remote control for my DBO4 system. Um, I mean, it does what it says on the tin. We've been using these for many years and uh, they work, but an app opens up so many possibilities, which we're gonna see uh, now. Um, however, when you first open the app, you get this screen and you also get this screen if you've used the app and then you log out. Now, I will just quickly say at this point, bear in mind that uh, anything you see now uh, on the screen from the app relates to my specific app on iPhone, on iOS. So I'm using either an iPad or my iPhone. Your mileage may vary if you're using Android and also expect to see some changes as and when the app is updated. So this part of the video might go out of date quite quickly. Um, so you launch the app and you see this screen. Now this is a part of the app that I would love to see some improvements with because in its current form, there isn't an option, for example, to register with your own choice of email and there's no guest login. 
So you can't just be a guest and go in and then maybe register later to use some of the other functions. And this isn't just a case of me being old school here with wanting to create my own login um, or being anal about privacy. It's more down to the functionality of this, this particular login. So when I log in with my Apple ID, if I don't have an internet connection, I get this error message. So can you see where I'm going with this now? If I happen to be on a firing site and I'm firing from my iPad rather than my iPhone, this does not have a SIM card, this is reliant on Wi-Fi, and I find myself logged out of the app with no internet connection, I can't get in. And if I can't get into the app, there's no functionality of this unit at all. Now, clearly if you're firing in your back garden all the time, um, you've got Wi-Fi, you don't need to worry about this. So don't panic at this point. I appreciate that I am probably the only person left in the known universe um, who fires in rural places. I put this uh, to Scott at Ignite, uh, just to fact check that I've got this right and I'm not missing a, a, an alternative way of logging in. Um, uh, he confirmed that uh, yes, you do currently only have these two login options and you do need to have internet access to get in. He said that I'm the first person to raise this. Um, that's probably reassuring because it means that maybe the number of people who might be firing in a non-internet area are actually quite low. The good news is that there is a workaround uh, and it's this. Once you've logged in, the app does remember that you've logged in. And from that moment on, if you lose your internet connection, you are still logged into the system. Now to put this to the test, and again, this is iOS specific. If you're an Android user, you'll need to check this out yourself. Um, I've logged in, forced quit the app, killed the internet connection, opened the app up again, and I'm still logged in. Also, um, to uh, simulate an even worse case scenario, I've logged into the Ignite app, I've killed my internet, I've forced quit the app, I've then switched my iPad off and then switched it back on, in other words, to simulate a complete reboot, and sure enough, um, you are still logged in. So providing I don't have a complete brain fart when I'm out doing my display and I accidentally click log out, then I'm gonna be okay. So onto the app itself, and this is a view of the main screen. Now, when you first get the system, you'll need to pair the unit uh, up to the app. <coughs> you do that by entering a four digit pin number, which is located uh, underneath the battery in the battery uh, compartment. Now I have uh, asked a member of my forum who has two of these units to see if his pin number was different than mine, just being a bit pedantic here to make sure it's not a generic code. And sure enough, out of three systems, three different pin numbers. That's reassuring because it means that some ne'er-do-well in the audience who's got the Ignite app can't just switch his phone on and go into the Ignite app and then hijack your show. Once you've paired the unit up, you can change the color options of this light on the front if you want to. So I will just uh, cycle through some of the colors that you've got. There are six colors because you can have six units in total. So you can expand this to 108 cues. I asked Scott if it's possible if you've got two units to give them both the same color and then fire these as pairs. He said, um, this is on the roadmap uh, to add as a future feature. So let's jump to the free shoot part of the app, which for me personally is where I'm probably gonna be doing all of my firing. Um, as expected in a nutshell, you get 18 cues listed and the ability to fire them in any order. So the app essentially becomes a touchscreen version of a remote control. When you connect an igniter, you get a green color showing on that cue to confirm there's continuity. And after you've fired, the queue goes red. Now, in terms of actual igniters firing, Ignite is the same as any other firing system here in terms of it sends a pulse down the igniter and the igniter goes off. However, just for the record, um, I've got a few clips now showing the unit in action firing some uh, Visco fuse. First, we have a standard Ignite clip. This is a two meter uh, igniter. Next, we have a standard Talon clip from my stash of igniters. So here I'm showing it stripped and twisted onto the plug from a used Ignite clip. Obviously, I've made the wire very short here for the purposes of filming. 
and keeping it neater. In case you're wondering, you wouldn't normally be firing fireworks with a, a six inch igniter. Well, you could do some indoor fireworks with them, I suppose. And then finally, a standard E-match. And here I'm showing off my jelly crimping skills. Now, I did run into another functionality issue here with the free firing system, and it's this. Once you've fired a cue in free shoot, it stays red. So it doesn't affect that cue firing again. So to be clear about this, you can press a red cue and it will fire again. You can press a cue where it's not even green, where nothing's connected uh, and it will fire. Um, but even if you take the used igniter out and put a new one in, the system doesn't change the cue from red to green. So it's kind of a one-way system. Once you've fired loads of cues, you'll be left with a screen of, of red cues. Now, I asked Scott about this, and he has confirmed that there's no way to reset this in the free firing screen from within the app. The workaround is to force quit the app, relaunch it, and at that point, the free shoot screen resets in terms of showing what's been fired and anything connected to it, if there's continuity, will, will be green. Um, but having to force quit the app to reset this screen is a bit clunky and I hope this is fixed in a future update. So that aside, here are a couple of features that I really like about the free shoot. Uh, and here we are now moving into the realms of genius uh, when you're used to using a dumb remote control. The first feature I like is the ability to actually assign a firework name to each queue. This enables you beforehand to essentially design your free firing show and have all your firework names. It might just help make set up a little bit easier because you've got an actual name of a, of a firework that relates to what you need to plug in to what queue. But even better, you can put a duration in. Now the importance of this is that if you put a duration in, as you'll see on the screen now, when you press fire, you get a countdown timer starting from the duration you put in down to zero. Now, when it gets to zero, nothing happens, nothing else fires unless you manually fire something. But the reason this is gonna be useful is you don't necessarily have to put the fireworks duration in. You can put in an, the time until you need to fire your next queue. So to give an example, you could have a fountain on Q1, that might last 60 seconds, but you might want to fire some candles over the top after 30 seconds, once the fountain's got some height. So you can put 30 seconds in as the duration of Q1, you press fire, you'll get a countdown, and you'll know then to move on to the next queue. I think that actually is, is a pretty neat feature. You can also select from fireworks listed in the firework catalog, which is a, another part of this system that I think could develop into something pretty useful. So this is designed to be a global database of consumer fireworks. So you can pick a firework, the manufacturer will already have put in a duration. There's video as well that you can watch. At the time of doing this video, only three UK brands have fireworks listed. And of course the usefulness of this system is gonna be dependent on brands keeping listings up to date and entering accurate information. So this whole concept really is a discussion in itself. I don't want to get bogged down too much in it at this point, um, because personally I'm unlikely to use the firework catalog. I like to research my fireworks myself and do it the long-winded way. But like many features of this system, it's free and it's there if you want to use it. Aside from the free shooting option, the other way of firing a show on Ignite is using the show designer. You design the show in a browser-based designer. Um, note that iOS users will need to use Chrome because it doesn't run on Safari. After you've done your show, you get a four-digit code. You put that into the app. Your show then appears. You can prep the show. You can check it over. You can't edit it in the app. You have to go back into the show designer if you want to do that. Um, there is a potential here for retailers selling a display pack of fireworks also supplying you with the code so you've got a firing order then and even the completely automated way of setting your fireworks off now in terms of functionality the show is actually downloaded to the module uh, and then it fires autonomously you have some options to um, go through here you can tell it that if you move out of range the show should stop for safety reasons or you can tell it to keep calm and carry on regardless. Um, also there 
here's uh, an option to pause the show if you need to, if anything you know happens and you need to, to, to stop things uh, momentarily. That's as deep as I want to get into the show designer though, because personally I won't be using it and it's no reflection at all on this feature, but we all have our own different ways of firing our displays. Um, in a nutshell for me, I like to have more control at the point of firing. So what happens if, for example, a cue doesn't fire? Maybe the fuse has got damp. Um, what if a firework fires its shots in 10 seconds instead of 30 seconds? Uh, what if you need to speed up or slow down the show? Um, you can't do this with the automated show part of this app. That is as designed. It is intended to be a complete show obviously, but in terms of how you fire your show, you'll need to decide whether free firing is the best option or whether a completely automated show is the best things. Um, this brings me to some functionality I'd like to see added to the free shoot part. It would be great to be able to enter your fireworks and your durations, but then save that list out, almost like a show in itself, but a manually fired show. This would give you the option of designing your free fired show in the app um, well before your display and saving it out or even possibly sharing it with other people. Another restriction I found was that you can't easily fire multiple cues at exactly the same time in free shoot. So you fire one cue, then you select another, then you fire it. I asked Scott about this and he said that this is also on the roadmap of features to add. <laughs> Okay, and now we come to a real world range test. That is quite a difficult sentence to say. Um, Ignite say that this system has a minimum line of sight distance of 50 to 100 meters. That's uh, quite a good distance. I decided to uh, push this unit off a cliff, so to speak, and introduce it to an awkward, uh, but fundamentally much more realistic back garden. Uh, Let's see what happened. Okay, big shout out and hello to Amanda for letting me film in her garden. Now, I think this is a much more realistic test of range than uh, a line of sight test in an open field. So here is a much more typical scenario for uh, us British people letting stuff off at home. It's a long and narrow garden with lots of fixtures and fittings in. Uh, here is the firing system. You'll note that it's uh, on the ground and not raised up. Uh, also that it is enclosed completely in a plastic box, which will be essential waterproofing at Guy Fawkes. I'm using a phone uh, to fire a test cue, which is a bulb. If I bring the camera down, you may or not be able to see the bulb light up. I'll do that again. Okay, so we're showing maximum signal strength at the moment, obviously. Let's walk this way. So according to Google Earth, uh, this is a 150 meter garden, which is about 45 meters. So ideal uh, for category F3 fireworks with an added safety margin. Um, already we've got a greenhouse in the way, some trees, another greenhouse. A uh, nice uh, workshop there. Beautiful garden, as I'm sure you agree. Okay, and here we come to what would be the spectator area outside the house. So uh, your appreciative audience would congregate here. Um, so no way is this line of sight now. I can't see the unit. There's several greenhouses in the way. Uh, lots of shrubs, some water butts, and my signal strength has dropped quite a bit, it's, but it's still two bars. And if I press fire on cue number one, uh, it says firing command successful. So this is still communicating with the firing system. It's sent a, an order to fire cue one. It's reported back that it's done. And this is pretty impressive, obviously, because really, you can't think of a much more difficult test in the real world. Not just the distance, 150 feet, but look at this. Vegetable patch, very big metal frame greenhouse. I did wonder if the metal frames of these would 
um, cause a problem with the signal. Another greenhouse, all the way back here. Um, if you're American and watching this, um, you're probably wondering what an upturned bath is doing here, but it's a very popular British um, garden fixture, the upturned bath. So we've got that in the way as well. Uh, and there is the firing system, um, still firing, reporting exactly the same, um, firing command successful. So I think that's a pretty successful test of range for anyone worried about either using Bluetooth or having things between you uh, and the firing unit. After I filmed this, I then, for my own peace of mind, got someone to stand by the unit itself and shout to me that they could see the bulb, the test bulb I was using here, going off. So just to put my mind at rest that when the app says uh, that the key was fired, that it actually was. Okay, a conclusion. So I'll tell you where I am with this system. Um, take what I'm gonna say now for a slight pinch of salt because there's some things I haven't done yet. So this is a very early conclusion. I haven't stress tested this unit by firing a show with all 18 cues or using multiple igniters per cue. I haven't tested it out in the foul weather in November or cold temperatures. I haven't and I'm unlikely to use the show designer or the firework catalog. Um, Aside from that, based on my first look, um, I do think this is, it's a fantastic system. Um, I think the excitement for this, the hype, is, is justified. Um, if I had to give it a mark out of 10, which is, it's probably a bit soon to do that, but if I had to, at this point, it would be an easy nine. Um, the point of knocked off, rather than making it a 10, is really down to the quirks and some of the um, functionality issues that I've mentioned previously. But, to knock any more points off for those would be a bit mean. So the reason is that these are all issues within the app and the app can be updated. The hardware itself, the functionality of this, um, is absolutely brilliant. Um, to, be, to be blunt, I mean, this, this had me at 18 cues in this form factor. This could have come with a remote control the size of this box and weighing five kilos, and I would still have been interested in this system because of the number of cues in this small form factor. It's, it's such a refreshing change from some of the clunky Chinese systems that we've been used to um, so far. Um, the app control, rather than using uh, a dumb remote control, um, that is just icing on the cake. Um, you've got a, a complete automated show designer if you want to do that. You've got a free firing uh, option if you want to do uh, your firing manually. Um, the range of this system, as you've just seen, is absolutely fantastic. It's more range than I will ever need. Um, you get fantastic support. Look at all these support cards that you get. Um, you get a lifetime warranty, as I mentioned before. So there's lots to like about this system. Now, value for money. Uh, I appreciate this is so subjective, of course, but for me, £180, which is £10 per queue, I think that is a uh, good value considering all the extras that you're getting. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing how the app evolves because I think at a, as a starting point, as Scott says, it's a first release system, but with what you get at the start, it's a great system and I'm looking forward to seeing how this evolves. <laughs> Okay, so we're coming to the end of this video. Um, I hope you found it useful. I wanted to go into this in a bit more detail than just an unboxing, so hence the couple of weeks it's taken me to do all of this, but I, but I hope as a result it will help you make a much better decision about whether this is a good fit for the way that you fire your shows. That is it from me. I am going to now um, go and have a lie down and then a cup of tea and then some <clears throat> hay fever medication. Uh, I'm sorry if I'm a bit bunged up at the moment. And I will catch you in the next video. Goodbye. Oh. <laughs> My God. My beard is actually gonna grow between shots because this has taken two days, two days of filming, right? To do, to do this section of the video, two days, because I keep fluffing my lines up enough ranting it's over it's over all i can see when i shut my eyes is ignite